Welcome to Glacier Farm Media's daily coverage of the 2013 Agricultural Biotech International Conference from Calgary, Alberta. From September 15th to 18th, we'll be bringing you daily news from the conference floor at 6 a.m., noon, and 9 p.m. nightly, courtesy of Myers Norris Penny. Well, my name is Rob Rennie and I'm the, uh, the co-chair of ABIC 2013 which is focusing on food, energy and water for feeding a hungry world. The two big industries in Alberta are um, energy and agriculture. And in the case of energy, we wanted to take the opportunity of this conference to have our strong energy industry, particularly because we're based, uh, the conference is based in Calgary, to learn more about the opportunities that ag uh, biosciences can bring to the energy industry who have understandably in the past been focused on the chemical approach to the production of, of energy. In the case of agriculture, agriculture is, is very, very critical to the province. We're a strong agricultural province, but if we're going to feed a hungry world, we need to be more efficient and more effective per hectare. And, and so we're going to be hearing about a, from a lot of companies who, who are, would be telling us what is the success we've had with soybeans and corn, major crops globally, and how will those successes apply to crops that are of great interest to semi-arid agriculture? By semi-arid we mean quite dry agriculture, which we see in Western Canada and the Great Plains in North America. So how, how will the technologies from wheat and corn apply to, uh, say, oh, sorry, soybeans and corn uh, apply to wheat or barley or oats or lentils or, or chickpeas, crops that are very, very important to semi-arid agriculture and particularly to Western Canada. We've got a couple special features here. There'll be a lot of discussion about harmonization of regulatory issues so that uh, if a product is developed in Canada, it can also be commercialized in other parts of the world. And similarly, on Wednesday afternoon, we're having a special event called a Venture Capital Forum because one of the challenges with new technologies and new products and new companies is that they need financing to keep going to grow till they can get to the commercial stage. And this conference is going to be an opportunity for those entrepreneurs to interact with those people in the finance industries, whether they're venture capitalists or traditional bankers. Good afternoon, I'm Bruce Sargent from Farm Boy Productions bringing you the Glacier Farm Media Afternoon Update from APEC in the beautiful city of Calgary. Earlier today, the conference opened with a presentation from Dr. Alex McKella, a professor from the Department of Agriculture and Resource Economics at the University of California. Dr. McKella presented on the production, environment, and trade challenges of global foods and agricultural trends. We sat down and had a one-on-one -on -one interview with Dr. McKella, but first, here's some footage from the trade show floor. Uh, I'm Doug Cameron with the Department of International and Intergovernmental Relations with the province of Alberta. Uh, my job here is to help people um, understand what, what we're doing in the bioeconomy area. Um, the sector I work on is clean technology and this is one of the areas of greatest potential for Alberta. So I'm here to help bring the bioeconomy team uh, to ABIC. Um, bioeconomy is a collection of organizations and gov government departments that uh, have combined to try and keep some focus on the various types of um, bioeconomy or bioindustrial projects that could occur across the province. So we're working to coordinate the efforts of um, the organizations within the province and uh, start engaging business so that we can help them find the right places and the right technologies and the right assistance to do what they do. To be at ABIC uh, helps us with a focus on the agricultural side. A lot of the time uh, bioeconomy takes a much broader view and uh, clearly one of the greatest areas of potential for Alberta on the bioeconomy side is going to be agricultural. And uh, there's more than just the agricultural bioeconomy. Bio there are all the other food elements that are going to be very important to Alberta. And as we heard this morning, there's some very important food issues and food, food opportunities in the future for Alberta. And I think that helps us get some perspective in the bioeconomy as well, that agriculture is going to be a lot more than just 
the things that we narrowly look at and that we have to fit within a, a grander uh, scale and scope of what's going to happen in Alberta in the future. And that Alberta should be a very major player. Um, I'm Jackie Robin. I'm Communications Director with AgWest Bio. And uh, we're here representing the Saskatchewan Biosciences. Uh, we are here also because we're going to be hosting ABEC 2014. And uh, we're here to, to promote that and to promote the province and all the research activity and commercialization activity that's happening in Saskatchewan. ABIC is uh, kind of the premier uh, uh, ag biotech conference in the world and AgWest uh, actually uh, started the conference back in 1996 and we always support it, um, travel to the ABICs around the world and um, so you know we had to come here to represent the province and it, so far it's been a great conference. Uh, we have information about the Saskatchewan bioscience uh, companies um, everything from health related to ag biotech related to uh, bioremediation companies, um, all kinds of groups that we're representing and we have a, a bioscience resources book that we're ha we have available at the booth. We're also doing a draw for a bio-based iPhone uh, cover so if you come we're drawing one every hour and they're made from a, a corn polymer and uh, flax uh, straw fiber so come and check them out and they're they're made by a Saskatchewan company called Open Mind Development so we'll give them a little plug too and um, yeah come by the booth and talk about Saskatchewan. Uh, Dr. Raquel do you want to give me a bit of a run through of what you talked about this morning? Well what I was asked to do was look at the challenge of feeding the world in 2050 uh, and basically I went through the mathematics of how we got to where we are at 3 billion in 1960, 6 billion in 2000, 9.6 billion projected to 2050. How did we feed them? Okay, and the last 6 billion is going to be fed by increasing productivity. So my question was, how are we going to feed the additional people, another uh, 2.4 billion people between now and 2050? Can we do it by just expanding land area? The answer was no, there's much land around. Are we likely to be able to irrigate a lot more water area with more, with more water? The answer is no, we're probably going to have less water. So it really comes down to productivity. We've really got to improve productivity, yields per acre, and we've got to improve the policy framework in which we work with. Okay, and uh, I guess the big thing too is that, you know, we've, we've got two models. We've got the developing model and we've got the developed model to look at obviously both need to change but where do you think which one has more room to go do you think well i think that the other one of the other storylines i had is that despite the fact that we've had a big increase in production and a large increase in trade the share of the world's food supply that enters international trade is very s small and it's pretty costly so if your big increase in demand is going to be in africa and asia which is where you have population growth and income growth then you really need to expand agricultural production much more rapidly there than you do in the developed world where the population growth is actually going down. So that says that you really need to pay a lot of attention to productivity of small farmers in Africa, to put it very bluntly. Okay, and so what do you think the, the big takeaway is for people going home after listening to your speech today? I think that we need to have the best science that we can get. It doesn't matter what kind of science it is applied to the real issues of food security. And, and I think particularly for Africa, they need access to the best there is. That involves investing in human capital. We need to improve the capacity of African universities to produce agriculture graduates. We need to have improved the capacity of African countries to manage their affairs. I mean, it's got to be a focus on making Africa and Asia better off. Well, Africa, I've heard stories about uh you know, some hardly trained agricultural people from Canada, you know, I heard somebody from a pork background went to Africa and taught them how to manage pastures just because they don't have any any fundamentals whatsoever. So that's kind of what you're talking about is building up those bases. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you had, I mean, Africa more than any other part of the world was, with the exception of South Africa and some North African countries, was all colonized by the European colonizers and they became independent countries after World War II, depending on who the, colony, the colonial power was, there was 
very little left of them in terms of education systems and university systems. In some countries, you have universities, but no faculty. Uh, so it's a very, it's, it's really a very sad case of the lack of institutional and human capital addressing the major issues of agriculture. So just giving them back that independence to, to rely on themselves and yeah. build their own infrastructure. Thanks for watching the Glacier Farm Media Midday Report from APEC in Calgary. We'll see you back here at 9 p.m. for the evening report where we'll be sitting down and talking with Jim Borrell, the Executive Vice President of DuPont Co. to discuss the science behind feeding the world. But before you go, here's a look at your afternoon schedule.